Hey everybody, I am 22 Tiger Dude and I am here to review the film Only God Forgives. And the film is about when Ryan Gosling plays a character named Julian. He is a drug smuggler thriving in Bangkok's criminal underworld. He sees his life being more difficult when his mother actually compels him to find and kill whoever is responsible for his own brother's death. I was actually really interested in this film. I liked Drive. I didn't love it. I do understand why it has a lot of love. This film actually got booed at Cannes and at the Cannes Film Festival. That really shocked me. And then now that the film is in theaters plus on demand, the critic reviews have come in. It's bad. A lot of people really seem to hate this film. Some call it a masterpiece. I actually found it online, downloaded it, and saw it online for free, so that was awesome. And now that I'm here reviewing Only God Forgives, I don't hate the film. I'm just going to say that. I don't hate the film. I don't like it. It's okay. I understand why the film has a lot of hate. Trust me, it's really understandable. But me, it was an okay film, it's disappointing, and Drive is definitely the better film from Nicholas Winding Refn, because this film is written and directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. This film, it has a lot of things that just don't work. Holy mother of all shits. The cinematography in this film is so awesome, fantastic, it's beautiful, it's a magnificent, mind-blowing detail, the neon colors, uh, colors just used, it is so breathtaking. Nicholas Winding Refn with the cinematography in this film, it's awesome. Acting wise, well, you have to understand this is a material that Nicholas Winding Refn gives them. Ryan Gosling, he is the same character that he played in Drive, except he talks much, much less. In Drive, I actually thought he had a good portion of dialogue. Sure, he could have said more. Only God forgives. It's a huge issue. One of my big issues because he rarely talks in this film, but Ryan Gosling, how he acts, and for the material that he is given by Nicholas, the director and writer, I thought he did a splendid job. And then there was this character, he plays a cop, but he really is not a cop. He's just the one that carries around a sword, slashes people's hands, and yeah, he just does stuff that cops do not do so I found it kind of stupid and a little frustrating that he is considered a cop here when he's not even a freaking cop. <laughs> he's played by actor... this name is gonna be hard to pronounce... Visaya Bansringam. I hope I pronounced that right. Him as the not cop, he did a really good job. He was awesome. And in this film, he's actually the main star of the film. Like, yeah, we get a lot of scenes with Ryan Gosling. But as far as who has the most screen time, I really think it's the cop. So it should really be him listed as the main star and Ryan Gosling as the second main star. Since Scott Thomas, she was fine here. But because of the character she played... You know, uh, that she was given for this film, it was really, really distracting because I hated her character. Her character is such a fucking bitch. I could not stand her character. I wanted her dead. There was this awkward, awkward scene with her sitting at the table with Ryan Gosling and Ryan Gosling's hot girlfriend. She actually is very hot. I couldn't get my eyes off her. But anyways, there was this scene where she is talking about the <laughs> his uh, Ryan Gosling's girl's vagina. He's questioning uh, her sexual lady parts. And she was actually 
comparing Ryan Gosling's dick to his brother's dick, and she was saying how her, her, Ryan Gosling's brother had the bigger dick, and it's like, oh my gosh, one, I wanted to shut off the movie online, two, it was awkward, and three, that is 100% unnecessary. I get Nicholas was trying to be artistic here, but there were scenes where I felt like Nicholas was actually being lazy. There was not there's nothing artistic about talking about someone having a bigger dick than the other someone. Also, Ryan Gosling's super hot girlfriend. She actually plays with herself. What the fuck? I'm not kidding you. She actually plays with herself. Seriously. <sighs> It was just crazy. I, <laughs> the violence in this film, I think it's very well done. It's graphic, and I could understand why some people could be offended by that. Nicholas Winding Refn is basically like Quentin Tarantino, where he just loves to make his films gore and bloody, and that's fine. There was this torture scene. Uh, according to a lot of people, it ran way too long. For me, it ran a bit too long, but it didn't feel like forever to me. With the cop and this guy, while there were girls around him, they were all closing their eyes. You see, actually see him cutting his eye, which was a little bit too much. And then he actually stabs the dude in the ear. Uh, so the torture scene, it was a bit too much, but I didn't cringe. I was still able to focus on the screen without looking away. I do understand some people's problems with the violence in this film too. The violence in this film really didn't feel like it had meaning. I feel like Nicholas Winding Refn just wanted to make this film violent just for the sake of it being violent and nothing to do with the story of the film. With Drive, the violence actually had something going for it. And then with Nicholas trying to be artistic, it just felt like he, the dude was trying way too hard. And while I do respect this film, I respect this film for what it tried to be. I respect Nicholas for what he tried to do with this film. It's just that a lot of things did not work. Whenever there are scenes that discussed sexual parts or anything that to do with the sexual themes it turned me off it was 100% unnecessary and it took away the whole artistic experience the action scene is well done though for example when this guy when there was a shootout at the restaurant that was probably the coolest action piece in this film in my opinion there are a few times where I could get bored there's this unnecessary thing where every time the cop he punishes someone he actually sings karaoke it's like what the fuck <laughs> I understand the meaning of that but it's just like it came off as random like one moment he's doing something very brutal and then the next shot you see him singing karaoke and it came off as very odd and then the other issue only God forgives lacks is the connections you don't feel a connection with any of the characters first of all Fuck Kristen Scott Thomas. Definitely no connection with her. Ryan Gosling, although a cool character, an interesting part he had, I felt zero connection for him. And the cop too, zero connection for him. Characters, they're like metaphors. They do resemble something. And I actually understood the meaning of some of the things this movie was trying to do. And like I said, I did respect that. There were certain artistic values in this film that really worked. They were really cool. Like, I was actually glued to the screen in some scenes in this film. And then, there are other scenes in this film where it's just a complete turnoff. It's very frustrating. And it failed. It just failed. But the most frustrating part in this film 
is the ending. <sighs> the ending was horrible. I fucking hated the ending. I understood the meaning of the ending. I did understand it. But Nicholas Winding Refn could have figured out something a little more clever. You know, something to satisfy the audience. What, they, what he did to the ending just made the whole film feel like it was nothing. And that it was a waste of time. Because the film in some moments are actually so promising. So you're actually looking forward to seeing how the film is going to end. And then once it reaches all that build up to the end, you get nothing. Nothing. It didn't live up to what the film was building up to. Only God forgives. It has a lot of problems. It's disappointing. Cinematography is beautiful. The acting is really good. Oh, and the soundtrack, the soundtracks in this film. Oh my gosh, they were so beautiful. I loved every soundtrack that was put into this film. I appreciated some of the artistic values Nicholas was trying to do. Others, they were just unnecessary. And I think he tried way too hard to be artistic here. And if you're one of those people that actually loves Only God Forgives, I respect your opinion. And I kind of understand why. But to me, Drive is definitely the better film that Nicholas Winding Refn has wrote and directed. I don't hate it like a lot of people do. I'm going to give Only God Forgives 2 out of Four stars. Subscribe to my channel. Comment your honest opinion on this film. Like and share this video. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I hope you enjoyed this and don't forget that I will always have Taga Power!